improvement. One thing that um, I, I will say, usually we don't see a lot of change in the goals or the one things for the campuses. And, and this year we really have. And, and I think it's a result of, of what they've been through the past two years and the needs of the students. And that's what the beauty of our commitment to excellence is that it can be changed every to meet the emerging and immediate needs of that district. And it's based on their data that their campus leadership team has, has poured over. And so tonight I'm here to present to you the campus goals for their one things. So Brent, their one thing is that 90% of the students will demonstrate writing proficiency using a grade level rubric to evaluate writing skills. And at Chavez, the Chavez staff will actively engage in intentional and monitoring techniques planning and checking for learning in order to provide data-driven targeted small group instruction so that 70% of students meet or exceed their growth measures. And that will be on the based on the MAP test. At Hackberry, 80% of students will grow one performance category on MAP in the area of reading and math. And at Lakeview, Lakeview teachers and staff will implement rigorous and relevant reading instruction so that 75% of students make a minimum of one year's growth in the area of reading as measured by MAP and or guided reading progress. And at Oak Point, all teachers will use purposeful planning to implement differentiated stations within the classroom. Differentiated lessons will be planned in accordance with the MAP continuum recommendations and student data in order to ensure engagement, enrichment, and accountability for each student as evidenced by 75% of students meeting or exceeding one year's growth on MAP. And at Prestwick, Prestwick Elementary will intentionally plan rigorous, meaningful, and engaging lessons in a variety of contexts so that 75 to 85% of learners will meet or exceed a year's growth on MAP. At Strike Middle School, they'll be working on planning for and teaching skills to students that empower them to take more ownership of their learning and growth as evidenced through at least 75% of students making at least one year's growth on MAP. And at Walker Middle School, each classroom's teacher will plan and implement purposeful data-driven small group instruction focused on listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills, otherwise known as the ELPS, that will result in an increase to 42% at the MOI and then at least 50% at the end of the year of students meeting their reading map growth goals. At Zeller's Alternative Center, they plan on focusing on improving their students' literacy levels by blending existing Edgenuity coursework, which is their online coursework, with rigorous face-to-face -face instruction focused on reading, writing, and speaking across contents to ensure further career and college success as evidenced by 75% of students meeting or exceeding growth on MAP reading. And at the high school, the high school will raise CCMR attainment for seniors to 50% through increased classroom engagement, rigorous and relevant teaching, and by way of increased opportunities that prepare students to meet the minimum passing score requirements of the TSIA2. The other topic I'd like to talk to you about this evening is blended learning in Little Elm ISD. As you know, we are in our second year of the Math Innovation Zones grant and the first full year of implementation at the kinder, third, and sixth grade levels in the mathematics classrooms. And last week on Tuesday and Wednesday, our partner, uh, Education Elements, was here and they were walking the buildings with us and um, going through so we could get our baseline of what blended learning looks like in our schools and our next step for each of our teachers for improvement. And so that was a great um, experience with them and, and we enjoyed our time with them and, uh, and our learning and growth as we walked our classrooms. And um, last thing I just wanna say a huge congratulations to our Lobo Marching Band. <coughs> And they advanced to Area B competition, which will be held next Saturday, not next Saturday, in two Saturdays on October the 30th, I believe at Mesquite. Um, and we still do not have a time yet. But um, we got in there because we got a sweepstakes, which means that we earned straight ones, which are superior ratings from all three of the UIL judges. So great job to our Lobo Band and um, Director Sturgis there. 
That is all I have for our curriculum and learning update this month. Does anyone have any questions for me? No. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mika. All right, thank you, Dr. Mika. At this time, I'd like to ask our executive director for <coughs> uh, construction, uh, Mr. Rick Martin, to come to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for letting me do this. Um, this is gonna be a, a quick update on our construction progress. First part, and this was included in your in your board book, was the, the budget analysis, listing of <laughs> items that have been, been completed, um, how much it was, has been spent, and then those going forward, what the health of our program looks like as of today. Next again is the list of completed projects that we've done in this uh, in this bond program and projects, which includes the two middle schools and our uh, district-wide ESPC, which is the uh, work that Siemens has been doing for us. Completed programs have been by the high school. You've seen the new entry gate into the athletic fields. Um, only thing left to do with that in the sidewalk is to uh, get those LE painted. Our our district colors and that's that's going to be done as soon as we get uh, some good dry weather um, under construction still is uh, we have some pick up things that strike um, the picture on the right is uh, windscreens they've now been completed at the tennis courts they're fully usable um, we do have some drainage issues uh, down around the field that we continue to work on we meet with that and talk about it every week and we're looking at different opportunities to make that go away and deal with that. Um, under construction, our indoor facilities, I view, this is about two weeks old. Uh, if you go out there and walk the site now, most of the perimeter grade and many of the interior beams that are connecting those, you see those things sticking up, those are the piers that were drilled, uh, starting to connect those things. Um, obviously the bigger box at the top is the indoor field itself, and then the smaller box at the bottom is the two-story locker room. Our next step there is to get the perimeter drives around, so uh, we'll make our fire marshal happy and he'll let us start to go vertical. A little closer shots on that same day. Progress is working well. Um, last week was the first time after the big rain that they didn't, uh, didn't get to do much, but they still had one sub out there that was working on forms, so we, they continued to work. Our conversion next door, uh, we are progressing uh, on schedule for that. Uh, right now we're looking at having uh, the areas in green uh, ready and uh, for occupancy over the Christmas break so we can get the uh, aims and goals and DAEP group uh, moved over during break. So when they come back, they come into these classrooms instead of where they are. Uh, the rest of the, the spaces uh, would probably uh, wind up doing in stages. Uh, but um, by the end of January, first part of February, we expect to have everybody moved over. And that's a big fingers crossed that all of our furniture shows up. Uh, if it doesn't, we have plenty of things we can use temporarily until that does. Uh, so far, other than metal studs uh, being delayed a little bit, most of our building materials have shown up, which is a good thing. This is just some interior shots. Uh, drywall is, is going up many places. Our doors and frames are here. Um, next thing to go in after they finish uh, sanding down the, the joints will be to start dropping in ceiling grids in, in various rooms and start buttoning some of the uh, spaces up. Uh, over at Prestwick, uh, all the under slab work is done except for the electrical and they're in the process of putting that in. Uh, the two areaways back by the kitchen and service drive are in and complete. Uh, the other two around the gym were supposed to be complete this week, but as you know, we had some rain and that is going to push that off until next week. Uh, coming around the front of the building, we have another areaway and a new drainage trough down beside the colonnade. And then the three on the uh, education wings, those, are, those will be the last ones done. <clears throat> um, continuing close out at both middle schools, uh, I will tell you that our major contracts with both contractors is complete except for retainage. So uh, we paid 100% out of those contracts, again, except for retainage. Um, 
what we have left is maybe a half dozen of third party vendors and th uh, people that, that we have hired separately from them that we're closing out contracts on them and, and uh, getting those items buttoned up. But we're, we're almost to the point where we can walk away from both of them. Uh, Closeout procedures are also continuing in phase two and uh, we're continuing to correct some items over the ball fields. Um, the uh, CUTX branch, we are ready to go. They're ready to go. Um, we're just waiting on a permit. And that's been in process uh, now a little bit longer than it, it was supposed to. But once they get their permit, it'll take them about 60 days to go in and do what they need to do. Um, Zellers, the conversion of this, this building is well underway. We have another meeting tomorrow afternoon. Um, Design-wise, I think we're there. Now it's a matter of um, making the numbers work, which is a struggle these days. But um, our plan is still to have this conversion up and running by next fall. We still have a few items uh, left in this bond that we haven't uh, addressed yet. You know, we still have some scoping items that are being done. Uh, phase three has started. Um, they're working on schedule, scheduling work at the stadium. Uh, as, a, as your, if you remember, Chavez, Chavez will happen next, next summer. Can I answer any questions? Rick, the only one I had was at the high school with the, the indoor facility. Have we had any major soil issues? Has everything gone according to plan? I know, just curious. I'm sorry. Um, we lost about uh, about almost a month okay. on uh, trying to get the uh, soils conditioned correctly, but uh, it happened. We got it. Okay. Has that? Did we have enough contingency to stay on track, or are we going to be delayed on that? Probably just a yeah, little that bit. Didn't, that didn't affect contingency. Okay. We already had some in the base contract to cover that because of past experience <coughs> on the site. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Right. Um, so I did see the next one up on the tennis courts. So we've been released to, to be able to go on the tennis courts now? Uh, we released the tennis courts to the campus last week. Okay. And then I noticed something that was different from Walker. So the um, the practice, like the soccer field, has football goalposts. I don't believe Walker does. Is there anybody who can check that to make sure that they both are compatible? Yeah, we can check that. Just so that they, they're equitable. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then I saw, so that, where the water issue is, what is that down drive, what is that driveway for? That's emergency access to the field for an ambulance. Oh, okay. Yeah, a student gets injured or somebody gets injured uh, on the track or the football field or someone in the stands needs emergency help. Uh, that's the way to get the rig down there. Where is that entrance on Walker? It's at the end of the bulb. When you go past, you know where, where the tennis courts are? That's the main exit off the site. You go just past that, and it's the right turn. Okay. There's a gate there. I just haven't noticed that yet. Yeah. Or there's no gate at the strike. Uh, yes, there's a gate there. Strike. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So my question was on the football field at strike, and I'm not sure about Walker, but is there play clocks? Because I know we uh, have not at the middle school level. No, sir. Not at the middle school level. Okay. It's all just kept on field. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just kept on the field by the refs, I guess. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I think there was one question. I can't remember what it was. Nope. All right. Thank you very much. I'm here all week. Okay. <laughs> thank you. And Rick, we're happy that you're here all week. So thank you very much. All right. Perfect. Uh, Ms. Flettis, do we have any um, citizen input? Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Um, we're doing three minutes, correct? Yep. No, five. five, five. I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> um, so, Ms. Latrice, or Latrice Roberts. You can just stand and give your name. Um, you don't have to give your address, and then you have five minutes. I'll give you a one minute warning. Actually, oh, sorry. To the podium. Podium, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry about that.
So my name is Latrice Roberts. I reside at 549 Lake Bluff Avenue, um, right behind Oak Point Elementary. Um, children have been attending Little Elm ISD for last five years. Previous, we were a military family. Um, Ex-husband was 24 years in the Marine Corps, Lieutenant Colonel based at the Pentagon. So I'm actually from Orange, California. Moved to DC, this was the retirement state. Lots of transmission transitions with my kids because we moved a lot. My oldest, both of the boys now are attending Jerry Walker, um, great teachers, but over the last couple of years, we have had some, some bumps in the road with leadership. And um, we came, when we first moved here, we've always knew my son had ADHD um, and transitional issues. S seven years old, knocked some things off the table, police was called on him twice. And, um, contacted school board, um, this district, and they wanted to rectify everything, moved my son to a different school district. And that school district took care of everything, put together an IEP plan, and it was just too much for me to keep going back and forth. I'm a corporate banker, been a banker for 20 years. Driving back and forth and I'm paying tons of taxes here, it's not going to work. So I moved my kids back. Oak Point Elementary, fantastic. This is the principal, assistant principal there. We're were there for years, great communication. Then there was a new principal that came in. Bumps in the road, um, my son being called monkey in the playground, um, called the school, but I noticed that every time that my son did something, I was getting calls. But when things were happening to him or he was being discriminated against or a kid threatened to stab him at the bus stop, nothing happened. And so when I reached out to the, te the principal, she kind of was confused, never responded back, contacted the district again, and it seemed like things were happening moving forward. By the way, just to let you know about my two sons, both mastered the STAR exam last couple of years. They do very good, but transition issues, special education. This year, the oldest son, actually he's in eighth grade. He had a hard time starting sixth grade, met with Mr. Vargas, his father and I, wonderful, great communication. Now my youngest son started sixth grade, some bumps in the road, he's doing compactive math, two periods in a row, having some struggles, sitting two periods in a row. He finishes work in five minutes. He makes noises and you know how little boys can be. There's a assistant principal there. I believe she was here at the alternative campus, putting him in a house suspension last week two weeks ago actually, called me, went down trying to find out what's going on, seemed like she wanted to be argumentative with the child and with me as an adult. So I reached out, doing the right thing a parent should do, reached out to the principal. To this day, I haven't got a response back from email. Instead, I got a call, ba a call back from the assistant's principal, another lady. We said we were gonna have a meeting, no response. Didn't materialize, but then we went back last week and had a meeting to look at my son's IEP because it seemed as though no one knew that he had IEP <coughs> plan. N none of the teachers, which is shocking to me since he's had it for years. And they sent the same assistant principal back to talk to us and we got nowhere. And she basically told me is whatever happens to my child disciplinary, that I have no, I, no say so in that. I'm not part of that equation. So my question is, if there's a challenge with a child, and I'm very active with my kids, and so is his father, if there's a challenge, how could I would not be part of this? Why would we not be communicated on? And like I said, it's been two weeks, and I still haven't received a response from the principal. That's all to say, and I'm hoping I hear answers. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. And we have um, Stephen Ware, or Stephen Ware, and Mr. Jason Phillips. Mr. Phillips, can you just state your name and you'll have five minutes. I'll give you a one minute warning. The last time I only had three minutes and I appreciate the five minutes because that's gonna give me a chance to, to honestly say 
I know that this school board has done a lot of great things for this community and turned a lot of things around. Even though I'm going to give what I hope to be constructive criticism, it's still criticism, I still recognize what um, y'all have accomplished. But um, I start by tonight seeing a post on Little M Live, and there was a criticism a parent had about a teacher. And you keep going down, and all of a sudden it's about somebody criticizing all the teachers, and all the teachers are, are bad. <coughs> and this is what I, I have to say. I want to put all this critical race theory conspiracy stuff to rest because it targets our teachers. It puts them in the crosshairs. And you can see how easily that just goes out of control on social media. Um, politicians and media's need rallying cries. And that's what this is. CRT is just a new political motto, motto to rally supporters. Just last month, two experts, two professors with PhDs in history and curriculum came and told this board that CRT is not taught at a graduate level. I want to say it again. It's not taught below a graduate level. It's not taught in public schools. For the record, I encourage a no vote to the last month's meetings as it only reflects that people spoke, spoke in favor but it doesn't give any specifics like this, like these two professors, but it does give details about what some of the opposing people, people said. So let's start. Critical race theory started in the mid seventies. It's been around for four decades. Why are we just now hearing about it? It's mainly used by civil rights attorneys. So the American Bar Association gives a very good explanation. It states, CRT does, does not define racism in the traditional manner as solely the consequence of discrete, irrational bad acts perpetrated by individuals, but is usually the unintended consequence of choices. In other words, it does not promote white shaming, but points to unintended effects of, from decision-making, such as the private, privatization of prisons that has led to higher and longer incarceration rates. Uh, Ms. Myers, a couple of meetings back, was stated that she was voting no to the request of the students because she found it offensive. That same meeting, a guest inferred that ethnic studies are stepping stones to CRT and says no one can teach ethnic studies without an implicit bias, which Myers to Spires agreed with. So we're saying that um, this is a slippery slope fallacy. We're saying that things like Brown versus the Board of Education, which is cited by the Bar Association as an example, it's taught all over this country every year in American history classes, and it's done without bias. Um, the same person claimed that CRT teaches guilt, blame, hate, shame, rather than forgiveness, and that Marxism is the core of it, um, and that we need to teach true principles that lead to freedom for all, which again, freedom for all, I go, I go to board versus the, um, Brown versus the Board of Education. Um, one constituent, okay, so it begins the witch hunt. One constituent, he yells out, that's racist to that history professor that was here as an expert speaker. That's an ad hominem attack. The man targeted, during his speech, he targeted teachers saying that we can't trust them to teach what, what, or teach, trust teachers about what they're going to teach, questioning if teachers are going to uphold any curriculum that we approve. Yet our teachers do that every day. One more minute. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, one school district uh, has fired a black principal because of an accusation that he was teaching school or he, critical race theory. And despite the outpouring of support from the community, he was still fired. Um, Mr. Flores um, last month stated that uh, ethnic studies as opposed to other studies would open the door for teachers to teach their own personal agendas. Again, painting a teacher on the backs of teachers. I think it's adding fuel to the fire. This district can't develop an unbiased curriculum, and you're giving little teacher confidence to teachers that you're asking them to equip, engage, and empower. I want to put it to rest. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Okay, and I did not see Mr. Stephen Ware come in. Flores, anything else? All right, perfect. Thank you very much. 
All right, so moving on to our approval of minutes. Uh, first item is to consider approval of public hearing minutes from August 23rd. Is there anyone that's read those that wants to put a motion up for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? All right. All those in favor? All right. I'm going to stench up. So second item is consider approval of regular board minutes for uh, September 20th meeting. <coughs> There's anyone for a motion for approval on that? Right, Mr. Flores, is there a second? Ms. Myers, All right, is there any questions on those? I just had one item on here I wanted to ask Ms. Flores about. Um, I was reading through, I kind of remember where it's at. <coughs> It's in the section where you had posted on there that uh, that I'd left the meeting at that point in time, uh, but then later in the uh, in the minutes is where we discussed uh, item J, I believe it was, and there are sections in there where it does state that I did make motions and comments, but it's later in the meeting, so it could be confusing because it says I left, but then it says yes, okay. And okay, 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 just wanted to make sure. Okay, that's it. Okay, the minutes from uh, September 20th, there's just a few uh, misspellings there on the, the third page. Says uh, up in uh, up under Amy uh, Roddy uh, says African American here, here one yes. word and then it was Mexican American history should be American there and then down Henry Johnson same thing okay. with the corrections yeah. discussed. Yeah, so all those for approval of these minutes with the corrections discussed here. Okay, motion passes with one abstention. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to our action items. We have consider approval of personnel <laughs> actions related to DFE. Uh, Ms. Brown. Thank you, President Montemayor, Board of Trustees <clears throat> and Superintendent Gallagher. Um, we have uh, had a discussion in closed session regarding this action item. And so um, with that, I want to read the recommendation. Uh, the administration recommends the board find that the resignations of Sharon Hyatt and Nee Chow were not in compliance with any of the accepted methods of resignation under Texas Education Code, sections 21.105A <clears throat> and or B, um, and that those educators' failure to comply was without good cause under Texas Education Code sections 21.105C2, 21.160C2, and or 20. 21.210 C2, and that the board therefore requests that the State Board for Educator Certification pursue sanctions against these educators for abandoning their contracts. I move the board find that the resignations of Sharon Hyatt and Nee Chow were not in compliance with any accepted methods of resignation under the Texas Education Code, sections 21.105A and or B and that those educators' failure to comply was without good cause under Texas Education Code, sections 21.105C2, 21.160C2, <coughs> and or 21.210C2, and that the board therefore requests the State Board for Educator Certification pursue sanctions against those educators for abandoning their contracts. Is there a second? Second. All right, any questions or comments on that? All those in favor? Right, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, second item is to consider approval of the 2021-2022 district goals. Uh, Dr. Micah. Good evening again. Um, I come to you for um, to look at the our district goals for this year that are based on Destination 2025. In your board book, you had the full workup with all of the um, um, 
measurable <laughs> steps as well. So this is just a highlight of what those specific goals are. So as part of our dis de destination 2025, we have different district foci. And the first focus is to focus on teaching and learning. And our um, it specifically says that the curriculum and learning services will provide a guaranteed and viable curriculum that ensures all students have equal learning opportunities. And so one of our goals would be that uh, we will continue to develop um, our curriculum utilizing understanding by design. Greater than 85% of the core content courses will be at stage three completion. Greater than 85% of non-core content courses will be at stage two completion. And we will begin incorporating digital learning concepts into the core curriculum. Our second priority within this focus is that curriculum and learning services will engage each student in learning experiences that increase student growth and achievement. So the goals this year would be that 100% of LEISD K3 teachers and administrators will successfully complete the Texas Reading Academies. System walkthroughs will be conducted and learning experiences provided to students will result in a 5% increase in the state assessment results at the meets level. And then the third priority is to uh, ensure that we're engaging each student in learning experiences that lead to increased college, career, and military opportunities. And so the goals under this priority are that LEISD will analyze, structure, and maintain streamlined CTE programs of study, and we will provide more opportunities for students to prepare for post-secondary success. Our fourth priority within this first focus is that LEISD will engage each employee in meaningful learning experiences that support student success. And our goals this year would like to be 100% of full-time instructional staff will be trained and supported on required instructional models and the LEISD curriculum management plan. That we will provide T-test goal aligned professional learning opportunities. And we're going to expand those opportunities by starting to provide weekly professional learning opportunities for our staff. The second district focus is the focus on community engagement. And our priority under this focus is that LEISD will communicate with LEISD community to build trust, support, and involvement. And the goals for this priority are that we will strategically plan creative content targeted to increase followers on Instagram. We're trying to reach our younger audiences. We also will be increasing community engagement by 45% on all social media accounts and we will build the Destination District website. Our second priority under this focus is that LEISD will foster relations with community partners to enhance educational opportunities. And the goals under this pr priority are that engaging the community by hosting the 633 run in the fall with a goal of 500 runners, which we successfully completed last this past uh, Saturday, and I know Cecilia wants to, and all of us, thank you everyone for attending and participating in this, and to continue to foster relationships with business partners as we open the SMART branch at the Little Elm High School. Our third district focus is the focus on human capital. And the priority here is to recruit, recognize, and retain high quality and effective personnel. And so our goal here is to target the recruiting of high quality personnel through an LAISD Grow Your Own <laughs> program, one of which would be the TWU Pioneer Bold Partnership, and the other is the Student Grow Your Own program. Another goal is to promote and highlight the recognition, recruitment, and retention activities of the Human Resource Services Department, specifically through videos such as highlighting the TWU TWU Pioneer Bold Program, also Auxiliary Employees in Action, and a video um, highlighting our first year LEISD teachers. Another goal is to strengthen relationships between Human Resource Department and campus personnel through activities such as the HR2U initiative, the first year LEISD check teacher check-in, and also a staff survey to see how our district departments are supporting and servicing our campuses. 
Our district focus four focuses on ensuring fiscal health and sustainability. And uh, the priority there is LEISD will ensure funding for teaching and learning operations and capital improvements to support student success at every level. And the business services department will be focusing on providing laser focused customer service uh, in the areas of budget management, as well as an analysis and modification of procedures to ensure that we are servicing our uh, departments and campuses. Build capacity within our community about LEISD's financial status through the following activities. The long range facility planning committee engagement, if the uh, 22 bond is called for, then uh, having a series of election meetings about the 2022 bond, and also applying for awards to build trust around our LEISD financial practices. Implement a budget alignment between business services, human resource services, and the student information services uh, through the following activities. The implementation of a position management information system um, with intentional collaboration between HR and business services, and also conducting Lobo 360 wow. reviews to ensure correct coding for all staff salaries and stipends. Also, to complete a compensation analysis, equitability, and alignment project within the district. So all of those goals uh, for the departments align with our Destination 2025 strategic focus and priorities. Are there any questions about the district goals? So is there a motion to approve the goals as presented by Dr. Mika? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Flores? Questions or comments? Sounds great. Thank you. Doug, um, so all those in favor? <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dr. Mika. <laughs> and third, we have consider approval of financial reports for August 2021. Mr. Weiss. Good evening, Superintendent Gallagher, uh, President of Montemayor, Board of Trustees. I get the privilege of presenting the financial reports tonight. Here's the cumulative total of the amendments to the general fund that we are presenting tonight. Uh, the increase to your local revenue is due to receipt of funds for uh, collected for art and band. And the state revenue increase stems from additional funding from uh, special, the state for special education. And we're gonna be presenting a budget amendment uh, each fall between functions after the dust has settled a little bit on new student enrollment and uh, personnel assignments. And these amendments are transfers from one function to another and don't result in a increase or decrease to the budget. And some of the work to repair those winter storm damages from last year is gonna be completed within this fiscal year. And uh, that's shown in, in the Yellow cell, it's uh, where we're recognizing the proceeds from the insurance company as well as the expenses for the uh, damages. And so it nets out to zero this year. The net impact on all the uh, expected fund balance from these amendments tonight is zero and it's highlighted in the green cell. Board policy requires that we maintain a uh, fund balance of at least 24% of the total annual operating expenditures, which is about $20.1 million. So we're on, on point there. For our capital projects, the Capital outlay fund analysis has been completed and updated to include all approved bond projects as of September 30th. And all projects are on track from a budget perspective. And we have almost $44 million in, uh, in project budget dollars remaining on approved projects. For a debt service fund, we're early on in the year, so there's not that much to report yet. We've, we've uh, realized a small amount of revenue this far this year. And our debt service payment will be about right what we have budgeted for it and we're on, on track there. And if you look at the green cell, currently as of right now, there's a, no expected change to our fund balance for the debt service fund this year. And the administration recommends approval of certain uh, August 2021 financial reports as submitted. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve these reports as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Right. Uh, any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do have one question. It's just over something you mentioned in there regarding the winter storm damage and the insurance yes, claims. How you, it's just one little phrase that you added in there. I just wanted to clarify. You said this year it's going to balance out to zero. 
do we believe that overall yes, it's going to yes. be covered by insurance? Yes, or? the other revenue is deferred to this year and that okay. covers the expenses. I just want to make sure just that we weren't going to be underwater on some of that. No pun intended, but we weren't going to be underwater <laughs> under nice. under some of that. We weren't going to lose any of the insurance claims or anything on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, do we have any consent agenda items that anyone wants to pull out separately? All right, so is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. No. <laughs> Mr. Blackwood, is there a second? Mr. Flores? All right, all those in favor? I do have some questions. On? Um, Just uh, in regard to one of the uh, yeah. Declaring technology equipment surplus and authorizing. Well, then we, we need to pull that out then. We need to pull it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask questions? I'm just wondering all this, I have a person in the community who wants to know who they would reach out to if they wanted to purchase items. Okay. So, so not about the material. No, but no just, not about, yeah, but just about that. Okay. We can. Yeah, we can send that request to, send to that Mr. Request Weiss. To. And, yep. yep. I'll, I'll get you an answer. I already have it. He's standing back there. <laughs> all right, perfect. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, as far as board comments go, um, yeah, I'd just like to thank the um, administration for you know for being here tonight. As always, um, I was not able to make the six three three run. Um, kids sports events got in the way, but I heard that it was a huge success. Both what I saw on social media as well as uh, friends and acquaintances of mine that went to the event. So I know that was a lot of hard work. Um, CJ, I know, put a lot of time and effort into that as well as, as the rest of the staff, as well as the Education Foundation. So I just want to want to thank everybody for their part in that. Um, thank the Education Foundation for, for wanting to get that going. And uh, it was, I mean, it was, a, it was a successful event, both financially, but also just getting the community out there um, plugged in with our district and everything. And it was, it was great to see. So that's really all I have for tonight. And I'll just start getting anyone else comments. Yeah, sort of along the same line. Thank you, everyone who, who worked so hard, Cecilia especially. Could we get some numbers maybe by the next board meeting to see how we, we ended up? With? Yeah, um, in fact, that's a good, great question. I do know we had 660 runners, but as far as the benefit of the foundation, we don't have the final numbers yet, but we'll report that to the board um, under the next superintendent spotlight. Yeah, we're excited to know. Thank you. Yeah. Just one thing, I wanna thank the gentleman who came up and spoke. I appreciate somebody recognizing the board for all the work they've done over the last few years. So he's, it's good to hear someone say good things about all the work that goes on. I just thought of my other question, Rick. <laughs> um, and it's just, if you can, when, whenever you get a chance, um, the closeout process, I know that both Strike and Walker have a punch list. If there's a way that we can just kind of see what that punch list is, because <clears throat> I know I have items that I'd put on it, but I know both Kellys probably have a huge list. Um, I just want to make sure that they're all identified, because I know there's a lot of little things that that just need fixed from what I've seen and I just want to make sure that those are covered. Um, so that's that's the only thing I really had. And then I know, Mr. Gacious, I think you were um, checking out concession stands. So maybe by next meeting, we can just get a quick update on just what's kind of being done there. And any of the leftover equipment that's sitting over at Powell, if that's getting kind of put to other campuses and things like that. And I had a great time at the run, even though I was dying at the end. <laughs> but it was fun. I'll, I'll wait. Ditto to staff. I'm sorry I was not there. Prior engagement. Um, my son came in from school, from college, so I was spending some quality family time. So I apologize for not being there. But great event. Saw everything. It was wonderful. So thank you for all your hard work and the towns. I know it was cooperation with them too. So um, that's it for me. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I, that echo. And I apologize when there. I'm still recovering and trying to get better. So hopefully next year. I'll be able to to really get a run out. Um, the President Michael Moore, I did have a couple of things that I uh, would like to bring up. Um, hopefully, would like to go into discussion um, maybe next board meeting. One is on elections. Um, 
the last two election cycles, we saw some a, a little bit of an unusual situation where we had campaign candidates uh, actually um, being present at the school doing voter registration. Um, and I would like to talk about policies um, uh, that that doesn't happen because what it does is it gives them to electionary. Uh, and that becomes problematic. Um, so I think that's a, something we should, should definitely discuss. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is also with candidates not uh, uh, sitting over their financial reports. Um, you see candidates who have signs, they're doing mailers, which passes the, the 900, I think it's 960 or 900, whatever it is, uh, uh, whatever it is, and they're not sending their reports in um, to the election commission. So I think that's those things are true, true um, concerns for me. Um, when I see candidates at campuses, the campaigns on campus, you know, that's just something that we shouldn't, shouldn't be, shouldn't be there. All right. And that was a, another thing I want to talk about real quick too, was, um, uh, <coughs> this goes a, a little bit in, in Dr. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, you probably can help us out on this one. Um, I think we do a great job in helping our kids move forward and understand, um, ethical behavior and moral behavior. I think we do a pretty good job. Um, however, I do see that there are some, some lapses. Um, last board meeting, you know, we, we really got really close to things like separate but equal and some other things that were happening. Um, and when we talk about the moral base of our kids, it's really important we instill some moral base within them. One of the things I've seen in some of the kids in some, uh, you know, at some of the games around the community, um, even kids of the same ethnic groups is using foul language <coughs> one, as well as using derogatory language to each other. So you have kids who are the same racial group who use the N-word towards each other. And I want to make sure if we're going down a road of, of trying to ensure that we um, work on abandoning racism, mm -hmm. to ensure that we are uh, working towards um, you know, a better society for our children, that we're monitoring our kids who are doing this. And I know what happens in school. I've heard it in, in rec centers and gyms. I've corrected students. As a matter of fact, I heard it a couple of days ago. You know, two African-American students were outside talking and they're calling each other the N-word. And I said, stop. You need to stop. If you don't want anybody else to do it to you, you shouldn't do it to each other. And I've taken that stance many, many times throughout, throughout my life in saying, stop it. <clears throat> and so I ask, you ask the community and ask people, when you hear our students doing this, when you hear our students out there using derogatory language, they need to stop. <coughs> we cannot have a situation where we get mad at someone else when someone else says something, but yet still we go back in the house and areas and we call each other the names. That's just, it's unacceptable. So, you know, if we if we see it, you know, if we experience it, you know, it's something in schools we need to really ensure we're watching our children and, and, and giving the information saying, hey, that's not the way we communicate with each other. And it, I know it happens and it, it's, it's one of the things that just drives me insane when I see it happen, it drives me up a wall. Uh, because if you're gonna stop one way, you gotta stop the other way as well. So it's something I really wanna, wanna for us to really kind of think about as we kind of go forward. So those are two things. Other than that, um, staff, thank you so much um, for everything you're doing, um, for the hard work. The 633 was just an amazing, awesome event to see that um, and see everybody and participate. I was actually very, very disappointed uh, because I know we did the color run and uh, I, I'm an avid runner. And uh, so I would love to, to have gone to that event, but- uh, We got next year. Yeah, next year. Yeah, next year out. It might help. Hopefully, it'll be better next year. So we'll do it better. Next year. All right. That was it for me. Um, I also wanted to thank Mike. staff. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. I also want to thank staff for the for the six thirty three run um, and everyone putting that together. I also was unfortunately unfortunate to not be able to attend. Um, also want to thank uh, Mr. Gallagher, uh, Dr. Mika Ross, and Amanda. She's not here, but for the team of eight training that was actually. Uh, that went off really well. Um, really did enjoy it. Uh, actually, at the end of it, kind of when 
everyone left. Uh, me and Alfred were the last two there. We actually got uh, about 20, 30 minutes to be able to sit down and talk to each other, get to know each other really well. So uh, that was nice, being able to get to know one of our new staff, newer staff members or uh, cabinet members. So really enjoyed that. Um, also, I, I had mentioned I'd sent some information over to President Montemayor and Mr. Gallagher uh, regarding an organization I am very, very fond of, uh, Raise Your Hand Texas, which is a group of uh, trustees and former trustees in the state of Texas that have put together a group for the supports public education. And they are going to be starting a uh, daily on this. Something I was hoping you'd be interested in. It's they're going to be starting a, essentially an advocacy program or training program. Basically kind of the exact same thing that El Tasby is, but this is on the advocacy side in addition to what you do as a trustee. They're asking for eight districts around the state to volunteer for this, uh, for the inaugural class of this. They're only asking for three trustees and a superintendent from eight different school districts. Uh, it's five meetings over 18 months, so if we could get people involved in that, that would be wonderful. Um, they will cover all transportation, housing, and, and food costs during this. So if we can get three up to three people or, or board members to, be, uh, to join that or be willing to look into it, that would be wonderful. I think it would be something to be great for Little Elm. Um, I did have a final item that I wanted to kind of go over, and this is just me personally. I'd spoken to Mr. Mont Montemayor about it at our team of eight. Um, I just got kind of a, a short statement that I wanted to read here that I put together. Um, first of all, I want uh, to make it adamantly clear that this statement is mine and mine only. Uh, these opinions do not represent Little Elm School District, the Board of Trustees, District Administration, or any other individual or group. Um, as a duly elected school board trustee and therefore a member of the Texas Association of School Boards, TASB, which is which in turn is a member of the National Associate or National School Board Association, NSBA, I do not share or agree with the recent statements made and or actions taken by the NSBA president, Viola Garcia, and the interim executive director and CEO, Chip Slavin. The NSBA's request uh, for the Department of Justice and the FBI to investigate and step in uh, in place of local school boards and law enforcement is reckless, overreaching, and beyond comprehension. The actions of the NSBA have thus far resulted in statements from 17 state school board associations admonishing the NSBA for their actions and several disavowing the organization and resigning their memberships. I do not believe we as school board trustees have the ability to remove the public's right to voice their opinions or concerns in an open forum. Community support and public input is a requirement for any school board or individual trustee to do their job. It's in the name itself, trustee. We're not in this permission in this position to promote our own individual ideals or beliefs or a specific political viewpoint. We are entrusted with the public's best interest. The only way we're able to do that is by constant input from the public. This happens in many ways, but the best, most influ influential way is for an individual to address their concerns by attending a school board meeting uh, and speaking directly to the trustees during public comments. Sometimes this could be uncomfortable. Some people may disagree, disagree with the statements being representative, but that's why the idea works. It requires all parties to be involved. It allows for open and honest communication between the people and the government. As much as I dislike the idea of being part of any government agency, I am, all of us on this dais are. And by taking that oath and by sitting in this chair, I have an obligation and duty to support and defend the public's right to do so. I wholly believe in our community, its people, and our local government entities. If the time ever rose and an individual or group became unruly, disrespectful, or disruptive during one of our meetings, I know we as a board, administration, and our local law enforcement will be more than able to handle the words or resolve the resolution or resolve the situation, I'm sorry. And I also choose to believe in our community that this will never be required. To our community, please continue to voice your concerns or support. I'm always willing to listen. I believe that the majority of the, or everyone on this dais is also. I will always put the best interests of our students and public ahead of any personal ideals or positions. Please attend our meetings and let us know what you think. It is the best way for us to learn about our community's interests. To our students, please allow your voices to be heard. This is your education. You have more of a voice than you believe. Let us know what you want and need. I promise I will always do my best to help you be heard and have a say in your education and future. Regards, Dan Blackwood. Mr. Blackwood, I, I commend you because I thought the exact same thing when I heard the NSBA um, willingly um, positioning uh, to go after our, our, our community members. 
Um, that's just unacceptable. Um, our community members have the right <coughs> to voice their opinions and to come and speak to us as trustees. We are here to listen to them. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mr. Gallagher? Thank you all. I'm just going to say thank you to um, staff. I appreciate you all. Um, and I'm just going to say thank you to the board. I'll keep it short. Perfect. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> all right, is there a second? Second. Are all those in favor? All right. I have 8.30 p.m. That's it? That's it.